Hi. Now, in this example, we've got the figure here that shows part of the curve y equals f of x. And x is valid for any real number. We're told that the curve passes through the points q at 0, 2 and p at minus 3, 0. And then what we've got to do in the first part is find the value of the combined function ff of minus 3. And then we're asked to sketch diagrams of the curve with equation y equals the inverse function of x. And in part c, y equals f of mod x minus 2. And in part d, y equals 2f of a half x. And we've got to indicate clearly on each sketch the coordinates of points at which the curve crosses or meets the axis. OK, well, if you haven't tried this already and want to give it a go, just give you a moment to pause the video. Come back when ready and uh, you can check your work solution with mine. OK, welcome back if you had a go. Now in the first part then, we've got to work out f, f of minus 3, the combined function. So this is the same as f of f of minus 3. Now when x is minus 3, you can see from the graph that the corresponding value is 0, the y coordinate here. So f f of minus 3 becomes f of 0. And what is f of 0? What do we get when x is 0? Well, you can see clearly it is 2. So the answer then is 2. Now in part b, we've got to sketch then on separate diagrams, sketch the curve with equations y equals, first of all, the inverse function of x. So we should be familiar with the fact that when you have an inverse function, what you get is a mirror image of your graph of f of x in the line y equals x. The line y equals x is a diagonal line. We'll just mark it in, OK? It's a diagonal line that you should be familiar with anyway. That one there. And so if we reflect the line that we've got here, y equals f of x, in the line y equals x, then the point q at 0, 2 is going to go to a new point, 2, 0. OK, it gets mirrored across this line here. Well, imagine then that that's the point, 2, 0. And the point p, this point here, gets mirrored across the line y equals x to the point down here at 0, minus 3. So that would be down here, say, at 0, minus 3. Mark that in there as 0, minus 3. And so our curve is going to look something like this. It's going to come up, round through 0, minus 3, up through the 2, 0, and then go shooting off like that. OK? Now, in part C, let's just mark that in. In part C, we've got the graph then of y equals f of mod of x minus 2. And for something like this, this is a combination of two transformations. If we just set up our axes first of all, what we do first of all is consider the graph of f of mod x. And the graph of f of mod x just takes the right-hand side of the original graph, so this part of the curve here, and it reflects this in the y-axis. So what you get then is something like this. We take the right-hand side of the graph, I'll just do it in dotted form, and we reflect this in the y-axis. OK, so this point here is still going to be at 2. And then when we subtract 2, we pull the graph down, we translate it down two units. So we get this graph looking like this. OK, something like that. These two parts are meant to be symmetrical, OK, 
about the y-axis and this will be at the origin. Okay, now in the last part, part D, 2f of a half x, this 2 is going to be a combination of two transformations. We'll draw our axes first of all, something like this. Okay, x axis, y axis. Now, we look at doing f of a half x, and what that does is it takes our original graph and it pulls it outwards parallel to the x axis, a stretch in other words, by a scale factor of 2. And the point Q stays invariant. This point at P is going to move away from the y axis to the left by a factor of 2. So it's now at minus 3, 0. So it's going to move to minus 6, 0. And our graph would look something like this. We'll just do it again in green. It's going to be a stretched out version of this one. So it looks something maybe like this. Okay. And this point here would be now at minus 6. Now what we do next is we take this graph, this is f of a half x, and we now multiply it by 2. So all our values, this by the way was 2, it stayed invariant, all our values now, our y values, get pulled out by a factor of 2. So this point now goes up here to 0.4. This point, however, is invariant. Any points on the x-axis stay invariant. So our graph now is going to look something like this, coming up through the minus 6, but going up through the 4 and being stretched out, scale factor 2, parallel to the y-axis. OK, so I hope that's given you an idea then of these transformations. Don't forget you can always check out these kind of transformations of graphs. If you just go on my website, examsolutions.net, plenty of tutorials there on this kind of thing. All right.